The do's and don'ts for the Baltimore Ravens against the Cleveland Browns this Saturday. First question came from my guy Jason and appreciate you being a team keep it clean patron. He said, Engraven, I just want to shoot off some thoughts regarding Saturday in no particular order. Things I do not want to see. Number one, Chuck Clark anywhere one-on-one against David Njoku. It does not work. It never will work. Number two, Marcus Williams as Marcus Peters, safety help under any and all circumstances. Peters and Clark have poor communication and cover anything. Huh. Now, for that second one, do you mean you actually want Marcus Williams as Marcus Peters, safety help? Because I think that would make more sense. But anyway, number three, Kyle Hamilton in the box more. I thought that he's actually been doing well there. I mean, he's been playing better everywhere that he's been. He's sort of been in that, that sort of nickel corner roll in the slot a little bit, going up against some tight ends. And overall, he's doing a much better job, especially my favorite thing about Kyle Hamilton that I've been loving, that has been just a complete turnaround, has been his tackling in open space. It has been so beautiful to watch. Anyway, number four, Mike McDonald in zone on second or third. I'm not greatly in love with McDonald's zone schemes. Okay, so that, that sounds like something that he does not want to see. Number five. Marlon Humphrey concentrated on one wide receiver. Keep him flexible between Cooper and Peoples-Jones in man situations. Okay. Now, it all depends on how they play him. Because, you know, sometimes Marlon Humphrey be playing outside. Sometimes he'll be playing on the inside. It just depends on where they line him up. So he's got to be flexible regardless. But we'll see. He said, and finally... The one, who shall remain nameless, getting comfortable running. He hasn't fully found his passing stride. Let's not allow him to run and compensate for that. So, that is, uh, he's talking about Brown's quarterback who's just made his return to the NFL over these past couple of games, Deshaun Watson. Now, you know what? To get a deeper dive and to get even more info and analysis on this upcoming game against the Browns so we can hear some do's and don'ts from somebody from their side, I brought on a very, very special guest to help us break things down. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, we just talked about some of the do's and don'ts that we want to see from the Baltimore Ravens in this game against the Cleveland Browns. So to get that same point of view, but from the Cleveland Browns perspective, I had to bring on a very, very special guest. My guy, uh, Quincy Carrier, appreciate you joining us. How are you, Q? Always, always good to be on. I'm doing as well as I can watching this 5-8 and eight football team. You know what I mean? <laughs> What what has been the, the the issue with the Browns this year? What's been going on? Um, well, defense has been a problem. The run game uh, defense was particularly a problem, like within like when they played Miami and Buffalo. And I'm worried mm-hmm. about it this week, right? Because Baltimore are going to have a giant incentive to run the ball this week. Um, so that's been an issue. Injuries. I mean, what JOK just went out for the year. We lost Jacob Phillips out for the year. We mm-hmm. lost Taki Taki out for the year. We lost uh, Anthony Walker out for the year. I mean, that's pretty much our whole starting rotation of linebackers. Now we down to Jordan Kuzniak, who I'm pretty sure many people watching right now have never heard of because mm-hmm. I didn't hear of him before the Browns had him on his practice squad. And blast from the past. Reggie Ragland. Yeah, yeah. Alabama 2016. Reggie Ragland. We got Reggie Ragland, and he's going to be on the field, folks. Like, he's going to get minutes this week um, because we don't have any other option. Everybody else is hurt. So that's mm-hmm. been a problem. Um, look, Every Browns fan will tell you that Joe Woods probably got to go at this point. Um, if there's anything to a G row in Cleveland, it's him, right? Like everybody thinks he should be gone. He, they they think he's holding back the defense. Um, we've had coverage bust all year, so the defense hasn't been great offensively. I mean, it was good for like the first six to eight weeks in the season, but these mm-hmm. last few weeks since week eight, week nine, yeah, the offense has been pretty bad too. So you know, just haven't been playing great football, quite frankly, um, all year. And, you know, when you don't play good football, you have a terrible record. Well, yeah. Now, um, you, you got somebody. This was kind of a big deal 
You got him uh, back. Well, not even back because this is his first time playing with the, the Browns this season over these past couple of weeks. Um, how has Deshaun Watson been uh, in his, his – his really his debuts? Yeah, you know, it's been interesting to hear a lot of people talk about it, right? Because I, I said it on my film breakdown. He has the perfect recipe uh, of a person to have opinions go crazy about his like play one way or the other, right? A lot of hype, a lot of time, a lot of expectation. Mm -hmm. People are going to overreact to almost anything he does on the football field. Um, and the reality has been that even that first game, as much as as much noise as people made about it being terrible, I don't think the film said it was a terrible game. It just felt like he was unsure about some things in the offense, but he didn't look rusty from a physical standpoint. And that showed last week where he looked more like himself, more confident in the offense. And I think this is really a player, you know, we talked about him being rusty in the 700 day layoff so much that we forgot that this is also somebody in a new offense. Mm -hmm. And he looks like a quarterback in a new offense. You know, he's progressing just as you would like. Like, if this were week two, we feel good about week three. Um, but, you know, it's it just so late in the year that it that it's hard to put yourself in that mindset. But he's been progressing nicely. It seems like every week he gets a lot closer to being himself. And I think this week he'll probably be – I mean, he'll be pretty close to his old self. Um, you know, I, I feel like he's about 75% after the Bengals game. And he took a huge jump, I feel like, after that Texans game. And it seems like every game where he gets mm – -hmm that information right the data of just being out there what teams are going to do he didn't make a bunch of adjustments and if you look at his career right um his rookie year when he was adjusting to the nfl he had three games that were kind of like okay you know slow start kind of a deal and then he explodes in his four for five touchdowns so this is somebody who has demonstrated like okay he's he can adjust rapidly and then once he adjusts he's ready to go off um, how long would that take? Would it take another game? I'm not sure. Would it happen this week? I think there's a chance, right? First home game, Ravens have been a good run defense team, especially good mm -hmm. pass rush. But, like, sometimes where you can get them is in their secondary because they've just had up and down play from, like, the Marcus Peters of the world and everything else. Yeah. So there's a possibility there. Like, you know, you leave Mari Cooper one-on-one -on -one with Pete. Like, you know, it, it got to be great or bad for the Ravens. You know what I mean? So we'll see what happens this weekend. This weekend, But, yeah, I feel pretty good about the progress he's making after mm -hmm. last week's game especially. That's where I was like, okay. There's, like, there was a thought in the back of your head, maybe he never gets back to who he was. And I'm like, oh, he's definitely getting back to who he was mm -hmm. um, because everything's there. He just he's just learning a new offense. Mm. Well, ho hopefully, it does take another game. Um, because yeah, we, we, we don't want to see him get back to form uh, against our Ravens. Um, but somebody who normally uh gives the Ravens a headache, uh, gives them a tough time, really gives the whole NFL a tough time, uh, is Nick Chubb. Um, how, how has he been, um, this season? You know, he started the season off looking as best as he's ever been. And then this last, like, half of the season, he's looked as worse, as bad as he's ever looked. Oh. Um, you know, he's had multiple games under three yards per carry. Um, part of it's on the offensive line. Part of it is, I think, the teams have really did a good job adjusting to his run style, right, which is stretch increase. He's going to stretch increase you. And I think teams are getting better at playing that the more that they play against him. I um, mean, it's time for somebody to take some of that pressure off of him in the offense because let's be real, like the pressure been on Nick Chubbs is like 2018. Like that's a long time for the offense to kind of be built around you. So he is having a hard time with that, right? Where they're, where, where they're not letting him get those crease lanes, where they're playing the back end um, and they're not really giving up and chasing after him like a traditional running back. He's having a hard time adjusting because I don't think he sees the field well, really, when he's not going against the grain. So he's been up and down. I don't expect that to change um, this week because Calais Campbell um, and that Ravens front does a really good job against the run. They're well equipped to do that. I think this mm -hmm. week, um, you know, and this might be good news for Raven fans or bad news. It might turn out to be bad news, as we kind of alluded to earlier. But this is going to be a, hey, Deshaun, you have to get back there and throw the ball a lot. Um, to win this game and you know we'll we'll see if he's ready for that but if he is great if he's not then you know this might not go the Browns direction mm. and now flipping to the other side of the ball I know you talked about how the defense has had its struggles um sometimes despite 
one side of the ball having struggles, they can be players that still shine through that darkness. Um, has Miles Garrett been shining through the darkness, or has he been part of that gloomy cloud? Oh my goodness, he's been shining through the darkness. Like, <laughs> yeah, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett has been incredible um, this year. I mean, like he's been playing at a defensive player of the year caliber uh, mm-hmm. level. Just his, he's been hurt since the car accident. Oh yeah, yeah, and he's so good. Like, you know, the stuff that he does is just ridiculous. He has that Euro step that he can do. Um, He got two sacks last week against the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, one of them was on Jamar Chase because Jamar had no idea what he was doing with the football. Um, (laughs) But, you know, he he had two sacks, a ton of pressures. Yeah, Miles Garrett is still Miles Garrett. Now, Ronnie Stanley's back, right? Like, that's the one thing about it, right? Ronnie Stanley, one of the tackles, even though the Ravens, I always give the Ravens credit because they don't play games with Miles Garrett. They've never really been interested um in figuring out like every team in the AFC North has had a moment where they're like let's see if Miles is really good let's see if the hype is true about him uh Jim Har- John Harbaugh has never been interested in testing the hype he's just been like nah we're not even gonna find out dog we're gonna put three over here and we're gonna chip with a line of running back and we just go live with that um mm-hmm. So it's going to be tough sledding, especially when Ronnie Stanley's there. Maybe just, they can just live with a double and a chip um, instead of, like, the guard <laughs> sliding over like they usually do. So we'll see what happens with Miles. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, Miles has been great. Miles has been probably one of the best defensive players in football. And, look, this defense has had good players on it. Martin Emerson has played well. Um, yeah. Intel Ward's had a down year for sure. I think he's been injured all year because um, mm-hmm. he broke it. Well, it's not – public public but he did break his foot so that's kind of an exclusive uh-huh. feel here here in the off season he broke his foot and i don't think he had surgery um and then you know uh, greg newson has been fine too so there's good players on this defense the issue has been the interior defensive tackle wise mm-hmm. they've been getting better players the last few weeks paragon winfrey has been stepping up um getting some t- playing time the problem with him has been off the field uh when it comes to like you know just grown adult adjustment stuff you know nothing nothing terrible but he's just not been he's been out he's been outside too much as the kids say Mm -hmm. um and he really enjoyed florida too he got caught up in that miami man (laughs) 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 without that game where there was like yeah perion was late to the bus because he Uh. was out and i was like what game i was like where are we playing this week Miami, oh, yeah. it, 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 it gets you that first year in the, the league. It, <laughs> you got to be careful because I knew the next week when they played in Detroit, he would be okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> he ended up being okay. But th- that Miami trip, your first one in the league, and it's at Miami at a decent time. It's been cold in Cleveland. I knew oh, he yeah. was going to get caught up in that. But, you know, that's just rookie stuff. Uh, it's, yeah. it's unfortunate, but some, some rookies have to learn a little, little bit more hard-headed. They got to learn the hard yeah. way. Uh you know, and it seems like he's learned his lesson. He's been playing well. Taven Bryant's been fine. So the issues on defense have been a lot cleaner. The defense has been better, but it's still not a good defense. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that's the problem. Okay. So to 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 end things, what what are three things that the Browns need to do or take advantage of in order to get a win over the Ravens this week? Deshaun got a cook. That's what it's gonna come down to, right? Like, um, Deshaun's got to cook. Uh, he we gonna need probably two pl- two hundred plus from him. We're gonna need probably um a couple passing touchdowns from him because this is not gonna be a game where it's gonna be easy to get on the ground. Um, defensively, I would say my biggest key for the Browns defense is do not let the Ravens consistently get four to five yards on first down running the ball. If you do that, you're done, right? Like, because they'll just – J.K. Dobbins you, um, it gusts the bus you until you can't do nothing else. So you have to be vigilant of that. No five-yard chunks early and downs. You can't let them get to easy second and three. You have to make Tyler Huntley's life as difficult as possible so you can force him to make some mistakes. Um and what else would I throw in there? I mean, you don't want this to come down to special teams because the Ravens are going to be better at special teams than you simply because Justin Tucker exists in a Raven uniform. Um, so you want to be careful with that. But I would say really is it's is Deshaun Watson play some solid defense, but Deshaun's going to have to get you over the hump this week. 
So it's going to be interesting. Is Deshaun ready? Is he ready to be, you know, close to himself of old and be in this position? We'll see on Saturday. But that's going to be um, the key because I don't think they win this game without a strong effort from four. Okay. And, I mean, hopefully they get a weak effort from him, but we'll, we'll see how this thing goes because you never know uh, between the, the Ravens you and the Ravens. get like 400, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, come back yeah. game on the no, Ravens. No. No thanks. You don't, you don't want that. Yeah, let let, let him say it's for next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, wait, wait. What would, would it be tied for first place with the Bengals at that point, or would it be the Bengals uh, in first place? No, um, the Bengals. Uh, what are Bengals? Nine and four too. I think they got they the same are distance. Eight and four, I believe. Eight and four uh, or something like that. I think they. they I know they're like right, right on Ravens' tail. They like right. Only there. thing saving the Ravens right now is the division record because they have a bad division record. They don't get any tiebreakers. Yeah, yeah, Ravens are three and zero in the division right now. Yeah. Um, so Ooh, man, I'm, I'm, but I know B- like, Bengals are right there, right behind the Ravens, super, super close. So Ravens cannot slip up like at all because Bengals, like I was hoping the Chiefs were gonna beat them. Nope, to like keep them away a little bit. I was, I know the Browns done had Joe Burrow's number. I was hoping they were gonna beat them, but nope, they, they. So Bengals, they, they right there, man. So it, it would be a tragic thing if the Browns end up winning. This <laughs> yes. It would be a truly tragic thing, huh? Would it, it, it would be. It, it would. It would set Ravens' uh, fan base, Ravens' Twitter, uh, all on fire. So hopefully, we don't have to experience that. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. We, 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 we is a is a strong term. You know what I mean? But uh, you know, I, I bet you're using the royal we for the Ravens fan base because we <laughs> on this screen feel differently <laughs> about what we hope to see on Saturday. Mm. But I understand where y'all coming from. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting, right? Because if Deshaun's gonna have a breakout, this seems like where it could be. Um, we'll see. We'll see, though. It could be, you know, there's pressure all game and he can't get loose and then maybe he throws like two interceptions and y'all win. So, hey, that'd be great. go either way. I wouldn't be surprised at any result of this game. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, before we get out of here, let everybody know, even though they'll all be down below in the description, let everybody know where they can find you at. YouTube.com slash Quincy Carrier or at Quincy Carrier on YouTube. You can also find me um, on AFC North Talk. Um, yeah. You can also find me at Worst Take on YouTube as well. You can also find me at the Cavs Burner if you're a basketball fan and you tired of the Wizards, okay? Because I know the Wizards don't ever day won 50 games since like the 70s <laughs> or something like that. It's been a minute. Come on to the Cavs wagon. Come on, Raven fans. I know y'all want that Cavs <laughs> wagon. Come on to the Cavs wagon. It's close enough. It's close enough. It's, it's close enough. Yeah, let go of them wizards. They not even in Baltimore, man. You ain't even got claimed that Baltimore fans. Uh, but <laughs> well, they, they used to be the Baltimore Bullets a while back, but they left to you. There's no reason to keep kicking it with them. What joy has the Wizards brought y'all? The Washington <laughs> Wizards have brought y'all no joy. Um, you know what I mean? The Cavs have at least won a championship. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Like, you know, I don't know who else you're gonna root for, but you're gonna go upstate. Do the New York thing? Nah, nobody want to do that. Carolina, you don't want to be the Hornets fan. Might as well come on home to Cleveland, root for, root for the Cavs, join the Cavs wagon because I know you tired of the Wizards letting you down. And then what happened when the Wizards play the Cavs in the playoffs? Every time LeBron used to cook it. But, you know, <laughs> find me there. Um, you also find me on Twitter at Quinn underscore C. Um, and y'all, y'all usually find me. Y'all usually good at finding me uh, in those circumstances in Twitter. So, you know, oh, I, feel, yeah. I, I feel like they'll find the description a lot easier if you guys win on Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, lose it, on it, Saturday. It, 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 it'll all be there. You know, Ravens fans, they all come <laughs> looking for you. Man. But appreciate you coming on, man. Fun as usual. Um, much love to you. Keep doing your thing. And, yeah, we'll see how this game goes this Saturday. Team, keep it clean. Make sure y'all subscribe. And we out. Yeah, this feels like a dream.